All right, guys, it's time again for our cover price top 10. We're going back one year. All right, guys, we are gonna get into this cover price top 10. We're gonna go back one year. How did those books do a year ago? Where are they now? What is the trend? Before we get into it, you know what to do. The subscription, the thumbs up, leave a comment down below. And of course, give me a follow on the social media. You have TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and whatnot, guys. We have auctions every Tuesday night on whatnot. Use the description down below. Get yourself $10 off your first purchase. Also, if you don't have a cover price account, check the link down below. Get yourself a discounted uh, discount code. Uh, and let, let's just get into it. Let's get to number 10. This is Special Marvel Edition 15. One year ago, Shang-Chi released earlier in the month, and his first appearance was hitting all new highs. This is not typical for the first appearance with a new film. Usually, due to high supply and demand, supply skyrockets and that drops the price. In this case, a 9.8 of this book is not common and therefore it hit an all-time high of $20,050 with very fine raws trending at a fair market value of $600. One year later, it's been eye-opening to see where this book is today. That all-time high remains to the market height as 9.8s trend at a fair market value of $7,500 with very fine very fine raws at $350. While this is a huge bust, one year later, it's important to use this book as an example of when to spec. There's a big lesson here. 7,500 is well over where pre-MCU announced, we are, I'm sorry, is well over where pre-MCU announcement. Shang-Chi was announced at San Diego Comic-Con in July of 2019 when 9.8s were trending at 3,500. As soon as the film was announced, they jumped to 6,000. If you were at the top of your spec game, then you would have bought in around 2018 at $1,800 when rumors were circulating. So while many state that spec is dead, it's not necessarily. It simply means to take educated risks with the hope of a potential appearance. Even if you bought upon the announcement, you would have been, you still would have been 1500 in the green. Heck, if you bought upon rumors, you'd be 4000 in the green, but buying at the height of the market right before or at release, there's only one way to go. So keep this in mind when it comes to speculation. Guys, with that, let's go down to number nine. This is Ghost Rider number 28. One year ago, there were loose rumors and speculation that a Danny Ketch led Midnight Suns was in development for Disney+. Plus. This issue features the first cameo appearance of the Midnight Suns via a future premonition. Their first full appearance is in Ghost Rider 31. However, the market preference last year went to issue 28, with Raw's trending at $30 and a high sale of $550 for a 9.8. The newsstand version also had a high, a big sale at $869 for 9.8. One year later, there's been no new news on the Midnight Suns, despite hope during San Diego Comic-Con and D23. Therefore, values have dropped to $21 raw, near mint fair market value, and a current 9.8 fair market value of $108. This is now under Ghost Rider 31, which is trending at a 9.8 of a fair market value of 130. This is a bust. The market has flipped on this though. That's what's crazy. The market was so focused on Ghost Rider 28, it pushed that book to, to the roof. All of a sudden now, the rumors are gone, everybody's quiet, the market has dropped, that book has come down, and now we're talking about Ghost Rider 31 being ahead of it. I always liked 28 better, but they're they're neck and neck. They're neck and neck and 9.8s. So they're basically both affordable, and if Midnight Sun starts to become rumored, I would expect this book to come back up. Maybe not those super highs that we've seen, but I definitely think over the $130, the $108, I do think they'll pop up over that. But you gotta keep your ear to the ground and see if there's any new news. Let's go to number eight. This is Werewolf by Night number one. One year ago, we had recently... We, one year ago, Variety had recently reported that Marvel Studios was searching for a Latino actor to lead an unidentified Halloween special for Disney+. Plus. Variety has confirmed. It's also mentioned... In the article, that the special could be based on Werewolf by Night and could feature Jake Gomez, who was introduced into the Marvel Universe last year in the comic. Werewolf by Night, Volume 3, Number 1, created by Taboo of the Black Eyed Peas, Scott Eaton, and Benjamin Jackendoff. That's fun. Gomez is described to be a descendant of the Native American tribe Hopi, who has been cursed with lichen... I can't say that. Lichen... 
whatever lycanthropy it's ah it's a werewolf thing. Also through his lineage. The news lit a fire under Jake's first appearance in this issue, moving Ross to a near mint fair market value of $55 and a high sale of $300 for a 9.8. One year later, we just received our first teaser trailer. While it's not stated in the trailer, it's been confirmed that actor Gail Garcia Bernal will be playing the original Werewolf by Night, which has crippled this Jake Gomez spec. Near Mint Raw prices have fallen to $32 with 9.8 at $96. This is a bust. What would have happened if it was Jake Gomez? So this book took a plummet because it wasn't, is it dead in the water? I mean, they may do the special and tease another werewolf by night. Who knows? hundred bucks for a first appearance in a 9.8 always seems like a fair price. Uh, it is a bust though. Try to not buy at those highs. Don't fall for the FOMO. Um, it was probably a decent spec at the time, but unfortunately fell flat. Let's go down to number seven. This is New Avengers number seven. It was this time last year when speculation began of the Illuminati coming to the MCU. However, no one knew when or where. Yet their first appearance in this issue hit $34 raw and had a high sale of $300 for a CGC 9.8. One year later, we know now that a multiverse version of the Illuminati did appear in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. In fact, once the Illuminati was confirmed in February of 2022, market prices went nuts for a near mint plus raw copy hitting as high as $200, nine eighths at 700 for February of 2022. Yet, after Marvel killed them all off in that one film, the spec died, bringing Raws down to $23 near mint, fair market value, and $117 for 9.8. This is a bust, yet there's still some long-term potential. However, it's most likely we'll never see a high again of $700. Guy, guys, you know, th these books get high, they get crazy, and then all of a sudden, poof, they're gone. Don't fall for the FOMO. Fun fact here, uh, Mark Morales was all over this book. He inked it, and Mark Morales will be with me at New York Comic Con one night on whatnot, Thursday night of New York Comic Con, which is uh, coming close here. We're getting there. We're going to be auctioning off original work from Mark Morales. Let's move on now to number six. This is Spawn 321. Between the heavily printed Spawn Universe 1 and King Spawn number 1 and all their covers, stores were feeling a tad burnt out from Spawn, causing stores to order a little more cautiously for the ongoing core series, which gave this variant the perfect chance to fly under the radar. Stores were most likely not ordering 50 copies of Spawn 321, hence it hit a high of $120 raw and later $400 for a 9.8. One year later, raws have dipped to $75, which is not terrible. However, 9.8s have fallen to $140, which is Deep. While this is a bust, spawn variants can be unpredictable long term. It's cool. It's a cool cover, but is that enough? What I'm learning more and more from the spawn collectors is they are completist and the hardcore spawn collectors. And if there's a variant out there, they want it, especially if it's a hard to find one. This is kind of a difficult book to find, but again, like everything in the market, it's coming down. So if you are looking for this book and you're looking now, you may want to hold off a little bit. If the market continues to trend down, keep an eye on it, watch those eBay auctions and see what they're going off at. Let's go to number five. This is Noctera number one. One year ago, Scott Snyder announced on Twitter that Tony S. Daniel and I just finalized our Noctera TV deal. Couldn't be happier with our partners and excited for what's to come. The official announcement with all the details will follow in the coming weeks. Thanks so much again. The focus specifically went to this standard cover, pushing all the cheap copies off online. Many copies sold with near mint raws trending at $30 had a high sale of $180 for a CGC 9.8. One year later, like with most content announcements, no updates have dropped. No, or no updates have dropped this back down to six dollars raw and forty dollars in a nine eight. While this is a bust, it's important to note that the content takes years to develop. Luckily, the all time high of one hundred eighty dollars in September of twenty twenty one is still reachable if casting and production news was dropped in the near future. This is a great story. This is a great book, and it is super affordable. Everybody got hyped up with that little of announcement. Could you imagine if they do start casting and moving forward with the project? I can see this book going up again Mo because it's so cheap now, which means people will probably run out to grab it because it's so affordable that will drive the price up. If you want to spec on this, probably want to start thinking about it, get into this book before any announcements. But who knows, man, sometimes this stuff never, ever comes to fruition, no matter what these artists and writers say. Some stuff just die. 
Let's go to number four. This is Oblivion Song number one. As noted last year, Deadline reported that Oscar nominee Jake Gyllenhaal is set to produce and star in Oblivion Song, a film based on the acclaimed series of graphic novels by Robert Kirkman and Lorenzo Di Felicio. Uh, De Fel- uh, that's wrong. Due to this, Oblivion Song was on fire with near mint raw sales at $25 and a high sale of $200 for a 9.8. One year later, like Noctera, no news has dropped the market value to $15 raw, $37 for a 9.8. Again, while a bust, content development takes multiple years. This is one. This one could be a good buy while it's low. Same thing. Whatever I just said about Noctara, Noctara, let's use that for Oblivion Song. It does take time when the news starts to creep in again. These things are so cheap right now. They're so cheap that there's only one way for these books to go, which is up. So watch, just be careful. Let's go now to number three. This is Noctara number one. This is the glow in the dark variant. This series features many variant covers, several with low print runs. However, the market was relatively cautious and focused mostly on the low hanging fruit, focusing on the main covers and this glow in the dark variant. Near Mint Raw were trending at $28 with a high sale of $167 for a 9.8. Now, one year later, this is the same case as the standard cover. The lack of news has dropped raw prices to $15 and $41 in a 9.8. Just go back and uh, listen to number four and number five. Same premise, same idea. Something tells me number two is going to be the same way. This is Noctera number one, the Jock variant. Last year, Jock fans quickly grabbed this B cover, helping it hit $14 for a near mint raw, high sale of $150 for $9.8. One year later, this too is a bust with raws trending at $10 and 9.8s at $31. These books are so cheap and affordable now. When news starts to creep in, Watch out, they may skyrocket. Uh, That was number two. We're gonna go to number one. Before we do, I'm gonna remind you guys, again, check out coverprice.com. They're giving you raw prices. They're giving you graded prices. Use the discount code down below, sign up. Hopefully you enjoy it. I know I do. With that, let's go down to number one. This is Star Slayer number two. Last year, the announcement of the on-screen resurrection of the Rocketeer franchise through Disney Plus created a nice boost in sales for the first appearance of the Rocketeer in Star Slayer number two. With a Rocketeer backup story and a full back cover spread by Dave Stevens, it trended at $55 for Near Mint Raw and had a high sale of $565 for a CGC 9.8. One year later, that $565 remains the highest sold. Today, the first is trending at $30 Raw and 280 in a 9.8. If the Disney Plus series captures even a fraction of the original film's charm, then this book could see a slight uptick. But for now, it is a bust, literally bust across the list. Let's wrap this video up, guys. Let's get into it. This was a bust across the board. If you had purchased these books at... In 2021 at fair market value, you would be out thousands, specifically due to Shang-Chi. So what's the recap lessons here? Well, the time to buy is before rumors and announcements. Key characters like Shang-Chi can even still be strong when purchasing upon official announcements. However, the time to stay away from are the months following an announcement and up to its release. After that, it's hard to say what like what it like the potential is for characters like Shang-Chi, the Illuminati, the Midnight Suns, etc. Can the can they hit The all-time highs they already hit on early on? Probably not. But does that mean these are bad investments? Marvel is clearly planning to continue to develop key characters like Shang-Chi. His first is not a book that will get easier to find in high grade. These books may be a bust one year later, but many, if not all of these, have some potential. Guys, make sure to check out coverprice.com. Check out those movers and shakers and top 10 list and come back next time because we're going back three years. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, keep it comics.